The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host with me, not the thunder that you're probably hearing on my end, but my co-host is Ms. Julia. Hello. You know, I keep calling you Miss you Julia. Do. I'm gonna have I was to just like, thinking change about it up. that. I was like, that's so random. <laughs> I know, it's, it's it's weird. It's like, People I don't know. People are going to think I, like that, I, I call keep... myself that. Like, I introduce myself as Miss no. Julia. He's like, no, that that's that's kind of a southernism thing, I think. <laughs> Yet I only do it with you. I don't I don't I don't introduce like say uh, Pat, one of my co-hosts on Thespian Talk that way. I don't say Miss Cat, but but it, it's it's weird. I mean, I don't like yeah, mind I, as such. Yeah, well, which is good. <laughs> which is good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, if I minded, I would have said something a long time ago. Oh yeah, this is true. So yeah. So yeah, oh, southernisms aside and everything, holy shit this week. <laughs> oh. First of all, what the fuck is Nina thinking? I don't know, because if she was like just fucking with him, then I would understand. But she actually yeah. went through with it, which is where she yeah, lost me. It's like, why are you marrying Rick Lansing, who you know is a scheming, conniving little piece of shit. Possibly a better question, though, is why is Rick marrying Nina? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, she's rich, but aren't her assets frozen? And, and I feel like she wouldn't marry her for that reason. No, he doesn't need to. Hey, he paid off two people to try and get Elizabeth yeah. back. To no avail, but still. So, like, so whatever he, Nina's reasons are, and I'm sure they're ridiculous and don't make sense, but like that's okay because it's mm-hmm. Nina. But like Rick is pretty calculating, so he like he must yeah. have a really good reason to be doing this. Yes, I I do hope so because it just seems random and out of nowhere. And what the fuck, writers? Like um, yeah. And 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 there's Franco sitting there like 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, what the fuck? No, like no, 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 no. Should go through this. You should go through this with me. And and of course, in the end, she chose Rick because she still believes that Franco doesn't trust her anymore. And and sure, for like a little bit, I'm pretty sure there was a little like sliver of mo- of a moment where he like didn't believe that she did not kidnap the baby again or what have you. You know. But to be fair, wouldn't that be just kind of most people's first inclinations? I mean, I think that was. Uh, might have been Nathan's first at least one of his first inclinations was that oh no Nina kidnapped the baby again and the video footage shows her being the last person there you know with with that kind of thing how can anyone not you know exactly. so it's I'm seeing it's not Franco being you know he, he's not intending on being a dick even though in, in terms of thinking she might have and, and he even stated outright at one point which is something that I was assuming he was thinking at the beginning to begin with in this whole situation was okay he needs to know so that he can help or fix it or whatever you know he's not try- he's, he's not gonna, he wasn't going to turn her in he was going to you know it was basically going to be run away to Canada part two basically you know yeah so you know that, that's what I had gotten out of it that's what Franco basically said of course not ex- explicitly in run away to Canada part two but you get the idea I hope <laughs> yeah. I, I do I get why she's hurt um, by that, though. I mean, you know, because he is the only one who's entirely had her back. And I think we've talked about this before, that, you know, even though she's yeah. kind of got her brother and he's kind of sort of got his father, that they're the each, each other's only consistent support. Mm-hmm. Um, so I understand why him not believing her, as opposed to, say, Nathan not believing her or someone else um, who doesn't know her as well and who she doesn't trust as much, thinking that of her yeah you know it, it's it hurts much worse when it's the one person who you expect to have your back yeah that said i still don't know why she's marrying rick because of this yeah and i don't buy that story at all about the, no, the bar just... and whatever falling madly in love 
no. They may have met in a bar. Sure, I, I can, I can, I can grant that much. I can grant having a good conversation, but falling madly in love in the course of what is it, one or two there's nights? There's a plot. There's a plan. There yeah, has with those to be. two, there's a plan. There is something nefarious yeah. going on. There is the only the only thing that would even make remotely as any kind of sense to me is that maybe Nina needed to be married, and so her assets can be unfrozen. Which I think that, which granted, that'd be kind of silly, but yeah, you know, we've had sillier plots. Maybe so. it's something to do with, like, along those lines. Maybe because of the whole psychiatric hospital and all that stuff. Maybe she needs mm-hmm. like a um, uh, uh, someone to have um, like that sort of what's the word for it? Um, like control over her. Oh, somebody. Like an executor, no, but it's not the will. Yeah. you know what I mean, right? So maybe, yeah, and obviously somebody, she doesn't want her mom to be that person, so like a spouse could do it yeah. for her? Maybe? Yeah, that, that could be it too. But that still Hopefully doesn't explain, it, Rick, that's, that still, so that's Nina's reason maybe for right. but that still doesn't explain why mm-hmm. Rick would go along with it. Yeah, that's so weird. It's like, what the hell, Rick? I mean, just, just the previous night, or, or two nights, however long it takes for a single day to play out, you know. You were all about Elizabeth, and you got on that nurse's ball stage in front of everybody. And, right, you know, granted, you got, you know, you got exposed for the lying fraud that you are, but you got up on there and were all about Elizabeth, and now you're all about Nina? Dude, what the fuck? Well, well yeah, so that's why mm-hmm. it's so clearly not really about Nina. Yeah, well, obviously. Okay. What do you want, Rick? Hmm. Oh... And so, uh, we'll move on from them. Mr. Cassidyne, your balls deep in your own Cassidyne, dude. Fuck off, Nicholas. Yeah, it's like, I could understand him, you know, being sick of being blackmailed. Understandably, I would be too. You know, and, and calling her bluff, okay, ballsy thing to do, but he, you know, when you're sick of it, you're sick of it. You don't really care about the consequences. Of course, Elizabeth is freaking out because, oh my god, we're going to be fucking pariahs because we did some fucking horrible things. Like, keep the identity of somebody that most of the town cares about very much, you know, uh, you know, his identity a secret from everybody, including himself, you know, horrible things like that, and let's not even get started on Elizabeth again. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, or at least not right now. We can do that later. You know, which I pretty much summed up on Tumblr as Elizabeth is freaking out because she is worried about not not necessarily just being a social pariah but also losing her fuck toy <clears throat> which is how i pretty much summed it up yeah so so of course she's freaking out and hayden you know she wasn't bluffing she went to go tell jason and sam exactly what was going to happen meanwhile sean has been dispatched to take care of jake because jake is still you know, people still think he's the one who killed Duke, including Sonny, and so, of course, Sonny, which, this seems like a very rash move for him to do so soon. Well, that's what Carly but was like, saying. Yeah, exactly. yeah I, I can agree, yeah, I can agree with Carly, <laughs> which, which is a sentence I don't always say, but, but I can agree with her, because it's like, yeah, Sonny usually is a little bit more careful, at least in comparison to Julian, who, holy shit, Julian! I, I gotta give Julian props, because he, 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 holy shit, Wait, wait, man. are we already moving past Nicholas? Because... Uh, this kind of ties well, into it, it does, a little bit. but I just can't yeah, the, the, believe the, Nicholas. Yeah, yes. well, we okay, will get oh, there. there. We will get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. This is all kind of tying in together a little bit. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll gush about Julian a little bit, a little, a little bit later. Um... So Sean was sent to, you know, again, like I said, to kill Jake. And as he fought, I think it was he fired or somebody fired. And next thing you know, you know, shot goes off. Jordan is keeping uh, Sean from actually shooting anybody or at least attempting to. And Jason, Jake gets Sam out of the way. And Hayden has been shot in the head. And of course, she's gone to the hospital. She's she's currently in a coma. Patrick did everything he could for her, but she's not dead—at least not yet. Just comatose. 
Uh, which, hey, kind of convenient. That gives her the option of coming back without having to explain why the hell she's able to come back from the dead. You know? So, okay. That, that, that's a little bit more. And it turns out... The one who actually shot Hayden in the head, it wasn't it wasn't Sean with his track record of not being able to hit the broadside of a barn. It was actually an assassin sent by Nicholas. Fuck now that go shit. for it. <laughs> I yeah. I cannot believe what's going on with Nicholas because this is far beyond Oh I want like ELQ, so I'm gonna like cause cause with the thing with Jake, even though I was really mad at Nicholas keeping his mm -hmm. identity hidden and all that. Nicholas didn't actively, um, he didn't, he's not the one who, you know, uh, uh, held us captive and brainwashed him and did all this horrible stuff to him. So while it was shitty, it was kind of, it was that inaction. He was, he hadn't right. done anything, he was not telling the truth, which is not, which I was not happy about. But, it, you know, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole nother level of actively choosing the, like the evil path, so to speak. Um, he put out a hit! He put out a hit on Hayden! Like, mm -hmm. that's... That is... That is bad, Nicholas. Sir, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah, and and leave it to the Cassidines. They, they have a better track record with hits at least from what I've seen in the past few years, than the fucking mob, who do it probably far more often than the Cassidines do. Well, that that says something. <laughs> it, it made me it made me think back to when uh, Dante, Luke, and Laura all confronted Helena on the on the haunted star out in the middle of the ocean, and she she referred to Dante as the son of a two-bit mobster, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know what, with these guys' track record. I see her point. Holy shit. When has... I mean, like, Sean, as far as I've seen, has not been able to successfully hit anybody. Meanwhile, Sean's... Nicholas calls in one guy, yeah. and boom, headshot. Well, and Sean is, is so severely incompetent mm -hmm. that that people are going to buy this. That he, you know, everyone's going to think, yeah, he shot Hayden. Everyone does think he shot Hayden. And I just think this is so funny because this is the second time they've pulled this shit. Because he was supposed to hit Franco, remember? And he supposedly missed mm -hmm. and hit Olivia. But that was yep. Ava. And this is like the yeah. exact same situation. Like, what are the fucking chances? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, shit, dude. Sean, you Sean, suck. Well, you, you just suck at worst. your job. Sean is you a know. terrible mobster. And wasn't he like... I mean, I know he was in the, the, the military. That was his like introductory storyline, right? He was like coming home from... Uh, a tour and like mm -hmm. he and Molly bonded or whatever. Like, you'd think he'd be able to like shoot and do things better. Like to be in the army, don't you have to be kind of competent? Yeah, it in, to some degree. I think you do have to have some sort of accuracy training, especially if you're going to be a sniper. And yet, and yet here he is being Mister Incompetent. Now, now I will grant a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. This is only what we see on screen. You know, so it could, for all we know, it could be plot driven, which eh, still makes him look bad. But we also don't see what goes on off screen. As far as what we see on screen, Sean, oh, you suck. Sean. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so he might, I'm sorry. he might be able to make the best BLTs in Port Charles, but as a hitman, you that's suck. That's kind of terrible when that's the best that can be said about you. <laughs> well, there are other good things that can be said about him, but you know. They're, they're, they're more not necessarily job related, so. Oh, lordy. Uh, I just don't so... see how this is the same Nicholas who would, like, do anything to save Lulu, who, you know, had, like, this very, you know, sweet relationship with Emily, who I just. Like, I mean, yeah, okay, having an affair with Elizabeth while she's married to Lucky, that's, like, shitty, but that's, like, a far cry from, like, evil and hitman. Or, or, you know, calling out a hit. And I just don't... I don't mm -hmm. know where this has come from. And I don't believe that Brett burned him bad enough to, like, make him evil. Really. No. Like, I just... I want them to either explain to me, like, better how this is the same Nicholas that I have known and loved for so many years. Or, you know, maybe he's being brainwashed by Helena somehow. 
I don't yeah. know. It, it could be, but we'll, we'll, hopefully we will find out. Hopefully we will find out at about the same time we find out about Jason's true... Well, the rest of the town finds out about Jason's true identity. Uh, which, not going to be this week, I don't I think. I really wanted it to be uh, during May sweeps, and it's, I don't think it is. It's not shaping up no. to me. No, but, you know, you got to bleed it out a little bit more. Plus, you know, you've got... You've got it's, it's one of those things in soap operas, you know, you have, like, four lines all waiting yeah. type thing situations at some point, especially during sweeps months. So, it's, you know, some things have to be swept under, some things don't. You know, Nicholas becoming more like his father. Oh, God. <laughs> just just don't go around kidnapping blonde women, blonde women, forcing them into marriage, and raping them. Don't do that. <sighs> Gee, is that a reference to a story? Yes, that is. His father actually did that. <laughs> Huh. So, yeah. To go on from there, Anna, at, at around the same time, around the same time this whole thing goes down, um, you know, Sean is there, and I mentioned Jordan to come up. And Jordan was actually dispatched by the commissioner, who got a tip from Julian Jerome, who, who you know, being in a moment of genre savvy, I, I guess genre savvy, or just some kind of intelligence and, and, and oh shit, hey, you know, calls the cops to protect Jake. Not not his other cronies, but the cops. He calls the commissioner to say, hey, uh, I, I think Parenthos is going to hit hit my man there. Can you do something about that? And so he did. So it was a trap, and it worked. Unfortunately, Jordan was the one who was sent in, <laughs> and so her cover is blown. Hey. We don't know what that's... Oh, I was hmm? just going to say, Jordan, I'm... Lo I love. love Jordan. Jordan's wonderful. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah. Sean had, like, a single moment of me liking him slightly better when he mm -hmm. got mad at TJ for what he was saying yeah. about Jordan. But I, yeah. besides, like, that one moment, I'm so mad at Sean. Like, I understand why he's hurt. Yeah. But he's being, he's being such an asshole to her. And and so is yeah. TJ and I I was waiting like so long for this to come out because I wanted you know because Sean has been has been such a hypocrite about her like this whole time and I was like yes finally the truth will come out TJ will see how awesome his mom is and Sean can go suck it and now the truth did come out and TJ is TJ is like not being understanding and it's making me so sad because all I wanted for Jordan was for her son. And for, for her relationship with her son to, to be better, finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, the thing is, the way I'm seeing all the all the characters, you know, you know, especially Sean and Jordan, trying to explain all of this and talk about all of this, you know, he's talking about Hello Thunder. Uh, that I that probably did pick up, and holy it shit. <laughs> that actually kind of... That, that kind of... That might even fit with, the, with another revelation, too. Uh, the fact that... You know, um, if anybody who bet against um, Sean being TJ's father, you need to pay up now, because Sean is TJ's father. Or at least Jordan says so. <laughs> and usually, when something like that comes out, it's usually true. So it's like, yeah, whoever, whoever, whoever bet that, you know, you won the pool. So you know, you know, we'll distribute the money later. Ah, but uh, but yeah, beyond that. Uh, as as I was trying to say before, I was rudely interrupted by Mother Nature. The 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 way that they're explaining how Jordan did her thing, like it was a career move, like it was something you know, she was putting her career before her son, and it's like that's not necessarily supposed. That shouldn't necessarily be like that. I mean, you're going undercover for the mob. You want to make sure your family is protected, and the cops will do that to the best of their ability. That's why they have witness protection programs. You know, so. You know, perhaps the you know TJ being sent to Sean, you know, those couple of years ago was not Jordan trying to put her 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 thing before anything else. It was trying to protect him. You know, you know her under under the um, oh, what's the well, you know under the suggestion or orders of of the feds saying, hey, look, you know, you need to go here. You know, this is why blah 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 made up cover story so TJ wouldn't believe her or whatever cover story could have been a little bit better maybe you know at some point maybe tj could have known but then again it could also be a case of plausible deniability 
what if her cover was blown? They found out she had a son, and they went to go find him. You know, that sort of thing, too. He wouldn't be able to tell them anything. I will say that I, that I do, like, kind of understand him being hurt that... Like, because, you know, she could have presumably turned down the assignment or quit her job or something. You know, mm-hmm. clearly she felt like this was important, and so she did it. But So I do sort of understand that he felt that she picked that over him. Like, I, I understand yeah. a little bit, but he seems... To me, it seems like he's being a little harsh with his mom because he was so upset with her for doing for like dealing drugs or whatever, even though Sean was also in the mob at the time. Yeah. Um, and so now to find out that she wasn't dealing drugs, or I mean, I guess technically she literally was, but she was doing it undercover in order to take down the people doing that. Like you, I don't know. I just he seems almost even more mad at her, and then not seeming to care that Sean just straight up tried to murder someone and failed to do so and at least seems to have put someone else in a coma. You know, we know it wasn't really Sean, mm-hmm. but they don't. Like, yeah. not at all upset that Sean tried to murder someone. Not at all. Yeah. Really? And, and Jordan's yeah. the one he's mad at? I can see why he would be. Um, the, big, the big thing there would be, you know, a betrayal. Like, you lied all this time to both Sean and to to me, you know, you know, and so like, yeah, I, I would be a little pissed too. I th- I think eventually he will get over it. Like he got over his mom doing the drug dealing thing, coming over to Sunnyside or whatever, you know. He I think he will get over that a lot quicker than some other people will get over some other betrayals, <clears throat> you know. But he'll get over it. You know, once he calms down, he'll realize you know what's going on. A little bit here and there, and and you know maybe they'll be able to have a talk, especially since Jordan went and tried to get Baldwin to cut a deal with Sean, and the deal is of course Sean rolls over on Sunny. This being General Hospital, this being Soaps, I doubt it's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I I highly doubt that. Even with the revelation that TJ is Sean's son, yeah, just it's it's, it's likely not going to happen. Whether whether Sean just chooses not to on his own volition, or if TJ tells him no, you know, you you stay loyal to him. I understand, especially since TJ is now an adult, you know, going to college and everything. And I'm and I'm sure he's I'm sure he's getting some money working at working at Kelly's too. So so it's not like he's not independent. So it's, he doesn't necessarily need Sean to help put a roof over his head or anything. I think he would be fine. You know, I mean, of course, moral support and everything. Of course, you know that that would be a little bit of a pain. I say, uh, and basically, in, in the end, in the end, I think Sean's gonna go to prison, and TJ and Jordan are eventually gonna make up a lot quicker than Sonny and Michael will. What if, <laughs> just putting this out there, what okay. if Sean is persuaded by by Jordan because TJ's his son or because whatever to you know roll over on Sonny? And then Sonny puts out a hit on Sean, and then Sean dies. Oh, that's that's another way I didn't even think of that. So then would TJ blame Jordan for Sean's death and for keeping the fact that they were father and son all this time? Or would TJ, like, blame Sonny and, like, become a cop or some shit? I mean, not yet. You know, he's a little young. But yeah. he'd, like... I just, I just, hmm. uh, I just want TJ and Jordan to, I just want him to forgive her, and I want them to be in a better place. And, like, what if, like, mother and son, both cops, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. He's still a baby child. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still, he's still in college and, and everything, so. Uh, I'm just, uh, I think the way they explain, uh, they had Jordan explain, I think it could have been done a little bit better. But which, eh, you know what? Can, yeah, what can you do, right? Uh, I guess, I, I guess the way that I saw it, the way that I ended up seeing it and, and understanding it was like I was saying it earlier. You know how how Jordan had put her career first instead of you know the obvious thing was yeah she's going undercover, so instead of making her look you know I mean granted in addition to making her look like a you know a drug dealer being put in prison and having to serve the thing or whatever, but. 
but you know, maybe just, you know, yeah, I, I don't know. It could have been explained differently, I guess, a little bit. Instead, you know, make it to where, you know, to where when this truth does come out, it doesn't look, make Jordan look like she was putting her career before TJ. I guess uh, that's kind of a writing nitpick on mine on my end, I guess. Uh, but what is not necessarily a writing nitpick on mine on my end, at at the same time everything was going down at the garage, we get Anna confronting Carlos. Because Carlos, as as we know, he went he he hit out at Sabrina's house overnight, and she figured it out. He tied her up as he left, and Anna went after him, and shot him. And then she shot him a few more times, and Carlos is now dead. And only two other people know that would be Kyle, of course, and. And, and who knows what Elizabeth overheard as she was walking through the docks at the, at an, at a very particular moment. Ugh. I feel like if Elizabeth so, knew, though, if she had actually overheard them saying anything significant, that she would not have been mm -hmm. as confused as she was. No. Yeah, probably not. But this is all you know. But this is also the same Elizabeth who is now, you know, knee deep in a bunch of other shit too. So you know. I'm glad. So. You know, so then Anna's not dealing with this well, clearly, and she starts uh, uh, hallucinating Carlos. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that Hallucination Carlos brought up the fact that she didn't kill Faison when she was in a semi similar situation with him. That she had a plan and that mm -hmm. she prepared. Because if they hadn't brought that up, I would be bringing that up right now. Because I. I do think it's kind of weird that someone who terrorized her for like half her life and terrorized her family and all this shit, she couldn't bring herself to kill. But Carlos, mm -hmm. who was carrying out a, who was clearly, obviously carrying out a hit for yeah. Julian Jerome. Like, I think and if Anna hadn't been so like blinded by grief, she would have realized that immediately instead of having to go through that whole thing with Sloane explaining to her why that was a bad idea, but whatever. Um, yeah. That that Carlos, she just killed without even thinking about it. So I'm glad I kind of brought, mm. brought that up, even though I'm not 100% sold on, on the reason or the, you know, like I do think it's weird that she killed Carlos not face on, but I'm glad that at least they brought that up and they're kind of like commenting on that. Yeah, it's kind of like a what the hell hero. What the hell? You know, and Anna Anna naturally, well, she's torn up about it. She killed a man in cold blood, granted, the man who killed her her her, her lover and and the fact and, and she was grieving at the time. Not the best time to be doing police work there, I don't think. But then again, this is General Hospital. <laughs> you know, we have cops doing things in less than perfect situations all the goddamn time. How many times have they sent Dante to arrest Sonny? <laughs> you know, or or Nathan to arrest his own mother, that sort of thing. You know, so so yeah, I mean, so that, that's obviously a thing. Although two two oh god, Finola Hughes does was has oh god, amazing job. She she has been doing an amazing job with with what she's been given so far, and and oh god. Uh, the man who, who, who's played Carlos. Uh, uh, I forget his name oh, right off. Vincent uh, Price, Jeffrey uh, Vincent Price, something like that. It's like, something I like, like it's that. three names. I'm yeah, look. but, but yeah, but, uh, but yeah, he's been, he, oh God, with him being spirit Carlos. Oh, oh God. How is there any scenery left? I have to wonder, where, how, how did they get so much scenery to, for him to chew on? Oh my god! And 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 that's a good thing, by the way. I love the scenery. Yeah, no, too. I think it, like definitely it was in a in a good way. Whereas certain people cough, Sloan cough. Um, mm -hmm. It's not in a good way. It just kind of it's just kind of painful. I feel like whenever he was doing that, what was he doing the other day? Like he kept screaming like Rivera, and I was just like, dear God, please stop, stop what you're doing. <laughs> And I was like, what the hell, man? Yeah, but, but, but no, but Carlos, I think, is, has done a great job. Because it's supposed to be a little, I think, over the top when you're, like, her, like, ghost conscience coming back to torment her. Like, I think that works. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, there there are very there are some good times for that. That is definitely one of them. Of course, any uh, of course, I also think over the top, and I'm thinking, holy shit, the times when Stavros would be on screen and and just doing his thing. Holy shit, that man can choose some scenery. Uh, of course, he's also a villain. I, I expect soap opera villains to be a little scenery chewy, you know. <laughs> oh, and and hey, he got it from his father. That that much I can I I can say that with with one hundred percent certainty. Oh, oh God. So, so yeah. And Sabrina, you know, because she and Michael spent pretty much most of the night waiting for updates on Carlos's arrest. Because as we know, Sabrina was the one who sent Anna to Carlos, to so she could arrest him. Anna could not, you know, she could not bring herself to tell Sabrina could, that 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 Carlos is dead. So, you know, because she lies, said, yeah, Carlos got away. Meanwhile, Ghost Carlos is in the background, just like, just like kind of screaming at her about it. Like, 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 you really couldn't tell her! Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a very serious moment, but, 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 you know, you know, hearing Anna say, you know, you know, start lying to Sabrina, and then all of a sudden you hear Carlos in the background screaming. It's like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> It's a serious moment, but there's a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of levity from Carlos in that one. And it's still a great, it's still a great scene, so great moment. Carlos moments, but... is played by Jeffrey Vincent Paris. Thank you. Yes, he did a very good job. And and by the way, I mentioned on a, a bit of an off note, uh, I I had mentioned that I was going to actually try and poke at uh, Bradford Anderson, who plays Spinelli on Twitter, to ask if he thought um, Spinelli was bisexual. I, I didn't do it directly. I was like, I, I just started wondering aloud, like, you know, is Spinelli bisexual? And I tagged him in it. I haven't heard back. <laughs> but that's okay. He's probably got a lot of people just you know, tagging him on Twitter or whatever. Uh, oh, so Lordy. speaking of Sabrina. Ah, uh, yes. She and Michael, they have they have their date. And, and, and they are so, I like them together. I was going to say, yeah, they, I was not sure about them at first, but they are growing on me. Um, which yeah. I was surprised because I I was not feeling it because I was I was first of all I was disappointed that they weren't going to continue something with uh, Michael and Rosalie, and mm -hmm. then um, when you know they're doing the whole Sabrina as the nanny thing, and I was like, we've kind of seen this play out with her and Patrick already, but but I'm actually kind of kind of uh, enjoying them, and I thought they had a very sweet date. Yeah. Um, so I can I could see this I could get behind this I feel like. Oh yeah, and and and, and so, you know with Michael and Sabrina kind of sharing like a lot of their own baggage from the past and everything, at the same time so they so they're more on even ground or whatever. It's like you know what this this is the start of a healthy relationship. And they both kind of have so that. So it's good. Um, you know, obviously a little differently, but they both kind of have had that mob association so you know michael obviously grew up with it and, and you know sabrina whereas mm -hmm. sabrina did not but you know from sabrina's involvement with carlos she has a, yeah. a bit of that uh, uh knowledge and awareness of that world so they can i feel like she can maybe get michael a little bit better than some of his other um, uh, romantic yeah. interests yeah or even potential or even well maybe not former yeah, because because Kiki, yeah, well, you know, her mother's a mobster, her uncle's a yeah, mobster. Yeah, but she didn't grow up with it the uh, same way Michael did. I'm not not saying that she couldn't also, you know, get it a little bit, but it's it's not quite the same. She didn't really yeah. know her mother was a mobster until she was an adult. This is true. This is very true. Although she's still kind of, I guess, back to dating a mobster's kid again, <sighs> except she's back with Morgan, and it's like, Boy, yeah. okay. Okay, I, I will admit, I, I playfully called, on, on Tumblr, I playfully called out, you know, the hate fucking and everything, or, or I, I think I called it the hate fucking, you know, which happened, you know, they got into a heated argument, Morgan's being a dick, and, and, and everything, and they, they end up having sex, and I, I've got to say, um, yeah, new Kiki's really hot, um, <laughs> but, and something, I think somebody else pointed out on Tumblr as well, is like, Morgan is being all this dick, dickery and everything, and at the end of the day, it's like, it's like Kiki apologizes when, you know, yeah, she went along with like the whole thing, with you know, like basically roofing Michael, 
to make him look like a horrible, you know, uh, father for uh, Avery and and all of that stuff. And uh, oh god, it's like I think I think it was like somebody had called it akin to like you know an abusee uh, apologizing to an abuser. I think yeah. uh, my words yeah, might I, be wrong did, a little bit. I saw that on Tumblr too, and I get what they're saying in terms of like that moment because he was saying some really shitty shitty things to her and then she apologized so that moment i i i get what they're saying however yeah talking about what they did to michael i in no way think that like that was not like oh all morgan and he like forced kiki into it i mean you know what i mean like she is a grown adult ish person who could very much have put her foot down, have said, okay, yeah, fine, you can do that, I'm not going to be involved, like, so, I mean, call out, I mean, Morgan's behavior in that, but again, no, okay, so, not to defend Morgan in that moment or anything, but I also think that that was, like, an issue with the writing and not with the character, does that make sense? I think I, I, I think mean, that unless they're going to set bit, up yeah. and start to write a storyline like that, you know, Morgan has not been in the habit of being emotionally abusive to any of the women he's been with. So, yeah, at least not intentionally. Yeah, no, I can't. I mean, I can't think of any other instance. So that was a yeah. really, really shitty moment. But I'm going to mm-hmm. wait to like start calling it. I mean, I wouldn't call him abusive. I wouldn't call it an abusive relationship from off of that yeah. moment. But th- but that I mean that is an example of a really shitty uh, moment and a tactic used by abusers for sure um, to turn that around on on the person um, that they're abusing and fault them for their emotions and everything. So definitely recognize that moment. But I, I think it's mm-hmm. too it's way too soon to. Um, make assumptions about where they're going with this new iteration of that relationship. Yeah. Makes sense. And, and That's I fair. hope, I hope, I really do hope that it was a uh, uh, misguided or, or a thoughtless writing moment on behalf of the writers and that they're not going to go down that road with Morgan and Kiki. Yeah, please no. Just no. <laughs> what I would like to see them do is have Kiki grow you know, just as a character again on her own. Like, 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 I, like I've said, I, I have very little ways of defining her besides that A, she's hot, and B, she's bounced between Michael and Morgan recently, and she, and she got into this whole situation with Avery, you know, because she went along with Morgan. And, and I think, and I don't think, and if I remember right, Morgan, I think it was Morgan's idea, she went along with it. It wasn't her idea, she just yeah, went along with it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, she's... Yeah. It's not like she didn't know what was what they were gonna do, though. I mean, she did. Yeah. Totally. Right. Uh, get yeah. Involved. But but the yeah, but the point is, it's like it's like I have very little to latch onto her. That's not just simply hers beyond beyond her looks, and and I kind of fault the writers for that. It's like, can we get something more, something more substance out of her that doesn't involve her going along with Morgan's plans? Or, or, or the fact that she looks really good in, in just a bra. Can we, can we, can I get something like that, please? Eh, but you know, but that again, that that's nitpicky on my end. No, Some I people mean, I don't know. Are, I, I mean, yeah. maybe, I mean, maybe it is nitpicky, but like I totally agree with you. Like, I, I feel like every, every single other character, or or nearly every single other character, at least the main um, cast. I feel like you can describe them in such a way that without naming them, you know exactly mm-hmm. who you're talking about because they have defining character traits and personalities. Um, and so I, I just, I don't know what it is about her. She just feels so inconsistent and so cardboard. Yeah, it's just, no. I mean, I mean, I mean you have, I mean, you have her father, Silas. You know, he. I've heard people not. They may not. He may not be everybody's cup of tea in terms of characterization. But at least you know. Okay, he is a doctor. 
he does he you know he does his best for his patients you know that at least at the beginning he was kind of no nonsense you know no nonsense just get the thing done you know not you know bedside manner was probably lacking at that particular point again going I'm going a little by memory here um, you know things like that what can we say about Kiki that does not involve you know other characters you know you know or or a prof or her profession if she does she no, even have she, one has she ever so. had a job oh she painted Michael's house or whatever and she you know was helping to fix up the brownstone for five minutes yeah that's yeah. bad yeah it's like yeah and, and then it turns out they lied you know they, they helped cover up AJ's murder and of course well yeah, they, they got put on Michael's shit list there too which okay justified you're kind of covering up something really important there so I can ju I, I can understand that but that's not where we're at there it's, um, yeah I mean it's but, like she blames Sunny for stuff with Ava but then she doesn't but then she blames Sabrina for what she did to Ava and it just like there's just not a lot of consistency like and I just don't really yeah. know what to make of her like I can't even say oh she's being written out of character because I don't really fucking know what would be in or out of character for her almost yeah it's 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 a weird thing uh but speaking of covering up we have olivia and ned and 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 all of that all of the uh, baby drama because they decided in the best interest of the baby to keep him to keep him away from julian to fake the baby's death which again i i think we've I think we hit on, on Olivia's reasonings why she wants to keep the baby away from Julian, and they are justified in that she wants to keep the baby safe. Sure. I, I can understand that. But it's it's hard to be behind her 100%, when, especially when you see what what effect it's having on Julian. Nope, I'm still with her on I mean, this I, one. Yeah. Well, I, I, like I said, I'm not fully against her, but I'm not fully with her. I'm, I got, I'm kind of in the middle because I'm seeing both ends. And I'm understanding both ends, I guess is where I'm coming from here. Because, like I said, I understand where Olivia is coming from. You know, she is wanting to protect her child. And, and that's a very, and granted, very valid. Very, very valid because, hey, his father's a mobster. And if his mobster father becomes involved in his life, he could become a target. Very understandable. Not, you know, not going to lie. But then you also have Julian, who has already has two children. He never got to see, you know, grow up, got to help raise. And it's something that he, he really wants to do, you know, his profession be damned, you know. And he's being robbed yeah, of Yeah, but that. I would feel more sympathetic if he wasn't actively making choices that put his family in danger and are then the reasons that she doesn't want her child around him. You know what I mean? It's not like something yeah. incidental to to his work. It's not like, oh, like, I can try to think of an example. And I don't know that I can think of one, but, like, it's not something about him that he can't change. It's, it's choices that he has consistently and actively chosen over and over again for, like, decades, literally. So I really mm -hmm. don't feel very much sympathy for him. Yeah. I mean, like, yes, okay, I feel bad, you know, in those scenes where she told him his son was dead and he was clearly devastated and heartbroken. It was sad. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't fault Olivia and I don't really, I don't feel like that bad for him that she's keeping the baby away from him. Yeah. Which... Which you know, you know, and they even got Obrecht in on the on the thing too, because like an accidental, accidental um, 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 cremation, which to me that sounds sillier than what it is. It's just just how do you accidentally cremate somebody? But but you know, apparently it it it, it, it quote unquote happened, and Obrecht showed him the you know the quote unquote ashes, which excuse me was enough of a confirmation for him. And of course, she played her part because Ned made a really great donation to the hospital. Mm. Uh. So you know, Julian ends up. You know, he goes home, and Alexis is there. They have a talk out and everything. And that's when he says, and of course, and and we're gonna start playing the game again. 
uh, every time every time this game starts up again, we need to take a shot because Julian is saying, "Yeah, you know what? Fuck it, I'm leaving the mob." Which, which I hope, I do kind of hope it sticks because I think one of the last times he said he was going to do that, um, you know, there was Dark Luke, you know, able to kind of strong arm him back in, you know. So there's there's no Dark Luke around, you know, and. And, and, and so, you know, when he said when he's saying that, plus the fact that maybe, I, I would like to think that, you know, with everything happening, you know, the fact, you know, with his son and how Olivia had treated him and everything, and now the fact that he can't fight for his son anymore because his son is dead, you know, basically everything around, you know, maybe actually pinged him in the head enough to where he's actually going to follow through and stick with this. I, I just don't know. Yeah. Like, if I didn't, and so then, you know, he tells her this, and she invites, like, the whole family over, and everybody comes, um, including, mm -hmm. hilariously, Morgan, and Jillian's like, what are you doing here? And he said, Kiki made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and all I got out of that was, oh, I'm fucking your niece again. <laughs> Jillian's <gasps> like, okay, like, that was such a weird moment. Anyway, it was like, this whole, the whole, yeah. like, clan coming to, like, show their support, and I'm like... Of the guy who just had someone murdered? Like, why are we getting this heartwarming family moment here? Like, I just... I've I've never been, like, 100% won over by Julian the entire time he's been on the show. Like, he's had his moments, right. and I like certain things about his story and everything, but I've never been completely won over by him, because he always came, came off to me as far more ruthless than Sunny ever was. He killed his other sister. He... Did mm -hmm. some really shitty and horrible things to uh, to Anna and Duke back in the day, um, and then he came on, and he was still a total asshole when he came on. Like he and Eva almost killed each other a few times, if I remember correctly. Um, he didn't seem to care yep. about Kiki at all until way later, um, and so I just was never quite sure that I bought his like I love my family routine when it finally came along. So, mm -hmm. and I think, obviously, like, at this point, we're clearly supposed to. He's not, like, it's not like he's faking his love for Alexis and his kids and I, everything. Like, I get that. But I'm just still not 100% sold on him and, and his sincerity. And I just, maybe that's why, but I just, yeah, I can't quite drum up the sympathy. Um, especially when he just had a man murdered in cold blood. Yeah. So... Now, and then, and now, then put Jason at risk. You know, he's on the cops after him, but that was no guarantee. He very easily could have gotten that right. innocent guy that his daughter cares about killed. Like, I just, I just don't care. I just don't feel just sympathy for him. Yeah. Although I will, I will say this. I think the only person in that room that realizes that Julian did send Carlos to kill Duke, or, 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 or not even Carlos. Well, okay. The the only person in there that knows the whole story besides Julian would be Alexis. And according to everybody else, according to their information, Jake acted on his own. So, so to, to just to give them, you know, give the other characters a little bit, you know, more of the benefit of the doubt. Now, when the, when the whole story thing, eventually... Though. I'm saying, like, the, yeah. the writers know, and they're still giving him this whole heartwarming, you know, family, these heartwarming connections with the family and whatever, and so it's not, I'm not blaming the characters for caring about their family member. Exactly, and right. I'm saying, like, writers, like, what are you doing trying to play him so sympathetically? Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. Um, so, yeah. So, as everybody's around, and before before we get to that, the end of that particular thread there, am, am I the only one who, who just cringed a little bit when Lucas popped up at Julian's door with all the balloons. Oh, yeah. That was hard like, to like, It's like, oh, no. He doesn't know. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be awkward and very tragically so. Uh, thankfully, it only did the one. And you didn't have Sam doing anything similar, thankfully. Oh, oh God. Just the once would have, was enough. We didn't need to, like, have two or three happen. And, uh, hap and, and that would just be... It, it would just... I, I, it would definitely bring people's sense of oh poor Julian a little higher, but that would be unnecessarily so. Mm -hmm. It's just no. 
Once was good enough. Thankfully, they only kept it at once, because then Lucas and Sam started calling around, and and which you know which got them to eventually you know make it over to Julian's place. You know, at, at, at I want to say at Alexa's behest too, um, because you know she was right. You know whether you know Julian good or bad. You know no matter what he has done. You know in the terms of this show. You know his family still loves him and he still needs somebody. You know because he because regardless of everything he is still grieving, and he needs you know that extra help as a grieving human being. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. I do not mean I don't like feel bad that his baby has supposedly died. I just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and and, and it's just oh dear. <laughs> So, everybody's there. There's another knock at the door. Who the hell is this Ava in a wig person? Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't sure. I mean, and I, I suppose that's the point. If she was mm -hmm. meant to be, like, Ava in disguise, showing it for, like, the baby had been born or something, and, like, like Lucas maybe didn't know what had happened, wants to see her family again. Yeah. Or if it's someone else. And if so, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I think the preview for uh, the next episode, I think she was claiming to be Olivia. What? Not not uh, not Falconeri, oh, but the dead um, sister. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see the preview. Yeah, Jerome. Yeah, I I I, caught, I usually catch the preview on uh, YouTube as well, but but uh, but yeah, I think that's what she's claiming. What? It's like, wait a minute, um, we're having another Jerome come back from the dead, really? Well, see, here uh, we go. See, this is if it if it is if it is Olivia, this is gonna bug me too because what I was just saying about how he was kind of a ruthless asshole, this is gonna like make it mm -hmm. okay that he supposedly killed his sister because oh look she's not really dead and it's just another way to I mean if it if it really is her, it's just another way to sort of be like oh he's really not that bad after all, and I I hate that shit. It's like retconning his like ruthlessness yeah. and and like. The fact that he's kind of a terrible human being by making bad yeah. things he's done like no one can count. Yeah, I mean, make you know, taking you know, ruthless and horrible human being, working up from that to make him a better person, that's good. But retconning it to where the original it doesn't doesn't work out so well. No. Cough, Franco. Uh, it's, cough. It's just, oh, I'm yeah. For Michael T. Rape, so it's all okay. Sorry, I will never get over that yeah. shit. Yeah, that, that admittedly that still skeeves me too. So you're not the only one. Uh, but um, but yeah, one other thing I wanna I wanted to pop at uh, for this week was Jake finally just you know after after Hayden being put in a coma and and everybody he knows being in danger, knowing he's gonna have a target on his back and everything because he's working undercover for Sloan. He's like, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, has one last night with Elizabeth. Ew. Uh, skeevy, skeevy, skeevy. And then goes to Sloane the next day and says, hey, I quit. Even even knowing what Sloane will do, and, and I admit, because I'd seen Sloane soften, soften a little bit you know, over the past few weeks or what have you, especially towards Anna. And then, he, but then, nope, he goes right up to Scott Baldwin and he's like, yeah, I want you to repress those charges on uh, Jake Doe. That's I was kind of thinking Anna might talk him out of that, so I was like, oh, really? Yeah. But, hey, you know, there, it, he's going to overcome it some way, oh. shape, or form. Yeah. There might, yeah, there, there might just be a way for, for Scott to not be able to do it, or the fact that I don't think the commissioner realizes that Baldwin is technically in Julian's pocket. So if Julian wanted, he, he, he could have Baldwin say, yeah, you know what, don't worry about the commissioner, drop the charges, that's my guy. You know, so, because it was, it was Jerome that got Baldwin the DA position. Yeah, so. have they really used that at all yet? I think maybe once or twice. Okay since then, but but it doesn't come up often. Um, I was so, yeah, I'm still so skeeved out by uh, Jason and Elizabeth happening um, yeah. because of what she knows, but um, I was just kind of like <laughs> at her expense 
when he like broke up with her for her own good again. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, like that just kind of delights me. I'm just like, yep, you fucking deserve it. Yeah, just a little bit. Just, just sorry, Liz. No, you just, just, like just, all of her no. scheming and lying and whatever, and she still doesn't get to keep him. Uh, I think that covers just about everything except, except for Sam, Sam and Jake, Jason. Because I remember last week, uh, in fact, in, in fact, I very, I think I may have even tagged you on Tumblr about you it. Did. About about uh, Sam's con artist pass needing to come yes, up. I was hoping she would talk to Hayden about it. <laughs> Although now that Hayden's in a coma, that's not uh, strictly possible. But she did talk to Jason about it, which was really nice. It was a good nod to the history because that informed so so much of Sam's early storylines um, and yeah. in, and her beginnings with Jason. So that was a really nice moment, um, and mm-hmm. I appreciate. I cannot tell you like how many times I rewatched that clip of him uh, protecting her from the bullet. So that was really yeah. nice too, um, and I just can't wait for more to happen with them. But in the meantime, uh, more is happening with Sam and Patrick. Oh, yes. So and I, there was definitely a good period of time where I would have been really okay with him exploring Sam and Patrick but right now it's making me so nervous because yeah. I was like okay as soon as Jason comes back it's like no contest but they're they're building up this relationship very well and it's really upsetting to me so Jason, or Patrick I mean was very upset that Sam was in the line of fire because she was hanging out with uh, Jason and Jake um and he made it clear that, you know, he wasn't uncomfortable with that. He wanted her to be safe. And, you know, he went, he didn't bring this up directly, but he went through, you know, he had some of his concerns when Robin was, um, because of Robin's friendship with Jason and with Sonny and whatnot. So that, you know, yeah. I think it's kind of close to home for him. No pun intended, because that's where Robin was shot. Ha. Huh. Um, mm-hmm. So... I, so I understand where he's coming from, and, and, you know, Sam gets it too, and they kind of have this really good conversation, you know, yay, healthy communication and relationships. Um, yes. And then they, he says, or, or they both say, I love you, I think for the first time, right? Even though they've already moved in mm-hmm. together, so I was, which yeah. kind of, so I kind of had forgotten they hadn't said I love you yet. So they, they, they say I love you, and I'm just screaming like, no, but yes, and it's just very confusing for me. Um, but also, so anyone who follows me on Tumblr knows that I've been doing this, like, big rewatch of Jason and Sam, like, starting from, like, 2002 or three, whatever. So I'm, I'm on 2006 now. But what's really funny to me is that, you know, so in, in this rewatch, you also see when Patrick and Sam first meet. Because, you know, if you, if anyone wasn't watching at the time, Patrick came to Port Charles because Robin, like, found him to come do brain surgery on Jason. So, Mm -hmm. some of Patrick's first uh, scenes, his first storyline, is all to do with Robin and Jason and Sam. Which is so funny, because where they are now, and, like, where they started, it's just really funny, because it's happening, you know, for me, at the same time. Um, He, she did not like him right off the bat, because he was an arrogant asshole, and he's hitting on her right out the gate, and it's kind of hilarious just seeing where they are now and where they started. (laughs) It's oh dear. Um, and that's that's been a, uh, one of I think one of the strongest relationships on the show. It, it, I think it was kind of like a dark horse. Like I don't think you would have expected it because they weren't really related in, in any fashion, not directly. But they had this beautiful friendship kind of grow, and then this kind of relationship grow out of that friendship. And even though I am pulling for Sam and Jason in the long run, they have done a really nice job with Sam and Patrick. They have. They really have. Although I will admit. I saw somebody put up like a couple of the screen caps with Jason, no, oh, not Jason, but uh, Patrick and Sam, you know, exchanging "I love yous." I was like, I, I'm, I was like half expecting the second screen cap to have the caption "I know," <laughs> because I am a Star Wars geek, not a, not to the extent of others, but I, I, I rate myself kind of low on that totem. But yeah, I would have seen it. <laughs> Um, and hey, you know what? It, it it all could have just tied in, be a Star Wars reference. It's like, oh, they're all owned by Disney. That's fine. <laughs> they could do that and get away with it, but maybe later on. Who knows? That would that would be that would be that would be kind of nice and 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 a little silly and funny. Which there were actually a couple of silly 
slash funny moments throughout the week anyway. Like uh, when the newspaper, you know, the newspaper headlines had, you know, Sean being brought in by the police that said the butler did it. I'm sitting there, I'm like, ah ha 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 ha. That that's the kind that's the kind of thing that my girlfriend would throw a pillow at you over, I think, or at the very least give you a really long glare, and then make a pun just as horrible right back at you. <laughs> oh, and then there was also during during uh, Jason and Sam's conversations, I, it's interesting how GH writing will bring in like different popular things that are going on at the time. You know, they'll, they'll bring in, like, you know, like if a movie's, if, like, a Disney movie or something is going to be coming out soon, they bring that up, or what have you. You know, that's, like, little nods in here. This one, they brought up the goddamn dress. And, you know, like, that was so like, funny. Like the blue... Yeah, the, the blue and black or white and gold. Um, yeah. Which, I thought was hilarious. Like, just, it was so random. I'm really glad, however, that it was what it was and she didn't try to like explain it and they didn't like drag that out you know because yeah. that would have been weird <laughs> but, but I thought that was just kind of a funny little nod because he just didn't at all which is very much in character um very much so yes <laughs> yeah so even without his memory he, yeah so yeah. <laughs> for the record blue and black or white and gold I honestly I don't give a shit <laughs> Yeah, no, no. It, it's it's just one of those things. Is like, who cares? Everybody and 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 it, it basically the whole who cares thing. My attitude of who cares thing for that one came up because everybody was arguing about it, starting flame wars and shit. It's like, guys, shut the fuck up. It doesn't matter, you know. Shit. <laughs> I I I, I kind of got burnt out on that when it was a big thing. So. Yeah, so that that's where I'm from on that one. Ah, uh, but um, but yeah, that should be it for this week. Unless there's something we forgot to poke at, and you want to poke at real quick. Uh, I feel like I feel like there's always gonna be some little thing that we, you know, I mean, there's it's five days worth of shit going on. I'm sure there's something that we might have missed, but I don't have anything else. I mean, yeah. you can you can pick this. We don't have to talk about how we have nothing to talk about. Yeah, but all right. So with that, we are gonna go ahead and get out of here for this week. And thank you guys for listening. And if you wanted to find Ms. Julia on the social medias, where could we find her? Gh-musings.tumblr.com. Come chat at me about Gh or Days of Our Lives. Mm-hmm. And as for me, you can find me on the social medias at gomer 21 X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, etc. Uh, you can probably find me on that on Steam too. So if you if you're a Steam, if you have Steam and you play games on Steam, you can always find me. You know that'd be cool. I I I I I will not turn down a free Steam game. And hey, sometimes I might do something nice for you. Who knows? Uh, it all depends on money. But um, if you also want to see some of the other things that I have done and that that I do, uh, Let's Plays. In fact, I even have, uh, as we're recording this, a new video review has went up, uh, up on my site, rtgomer.com. You know, you go check it out there, which that review will also end up on nerdvice.com. I think he said he was going to put it up Wednesday. So you can check out both of those places for other things that I have done, and also other very talented individuals such as Lady Jess, the Isle of Rangoon. Um, oh God, I, I think Smarty is on Nerdvice as well. Um, you know, Leon Thomas with Renegade Cut and Word Funk. I think he also does Word Funk. Uh, I, there, there's so many people to keep track of. Oh my God, uh, and I can't shout out everybody, unfortunately. But uh, check out both the sites: rtgomer.com, nerdvice.com. Not just for my stuff, everybody else. It's awesome. You'll enjoy it. And, of course, all of these podcasts that I do, you can also find them on iTunes if you haven't already. Uh, the great thing about iTunes, as everybody knows, hey, you know, you subscribe to there. And once it goes up, give it about, I would say give it about an hour at most, and you should be able to grab it pretty much right away. It would be great. Uh, so, with that, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with Julia, signing off. 
Support Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit RTGomer.com for more great shows.